a wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the major updates in regards to one of the most fascinating astronomical events in the last few decades, the event known as BOAT, the brightest of all time. And here I'm referring to the image you see behind me of the event known as GRB 221009A. Now, a few videos in the description below describe this event in a little bit more detail, but in essence, this was the brightest and the most explosive event we've ever seen. So bright as a matter of fact that was observed by pretty much every major telescope on the planet, even the ones not designed to see anything, because in many cases, the radiation from this event passed through walls of these satellites and managed to affect their sensors in some way. And this was essentially the brightest, the most powerful and the most incredible event we've ever seen and may ever see in the history of humanity. A gamma ray burst so powerful that it created an extremely bright flash from as far away as 2.4 billion light years away from us. And though obviously not the first gamma ray burst we've ever seen, when comparing this to other previous record holders, this was absolutely ridiculous. And it wasn't just powerful, it also lasted for a pretty long time, with certain afterglows even visible after 10 minutes, and a lot of additional wavelengths even visible 10 hours later. With all of this happening on October 9th of 2022, so basically like two and a half years ago from when I'm making this video. And interestingly, even right now we still see some of the afterglow, mostly in radio waves, just because of all of the gas and all of the dust that's currently reflecting some of these emissions even years after this event occurred. And back then when it just happened, it was actually absolutely shocking, mostly because it basically literally blinded a lot of satellites and produced such a powerful emission that it even affected the atmosphere of planet Earth. Okay, let me repeat this again. This powerful event, even though it was two and a half billion light years away from us, affected our planet. It influenced the ionosphere, it even influenced the radio communication, and in some sense, in terms of physical effects, resembled a typical medium-sized solar flare. And that's actually the intriguing part. This event was even seen by a lot of satellites that were actually designed to observe solar flares and even studied by various solar physicists that were basically left completely dumbfounded. Until that point, nobody could believe that something like this was even possible, or that gamma ray bursts so far away can produce so much energy that basically they affect the planet in ways we usually expect from the Sun. Funnily enough, even the Voyager probe and the Mars probe currently orbiting Mars detected some of the emissions and then relayed them back to our planet. And a lot of this kind of made no sense. Mostly because of the energy produced here. Here, in just one second, the amount of energy was equivalent to the entire sun suddenly becoming pure energy and releasing everything into one direction. But surprisingly, nothing really bizarre happened here. As a matter of fact, additional investigations, including the ones you can learn about in the videos in the description, discovered that this was actually just a supernova. A type 1c supernova involving a massive star, but a supernova nevertheless. Not some kind of a neutron star, not some kind of a magnetar, or some kind of a massive black hole destroying something in a process, but a supernova that basically produced the most powerful explosion we've ever seen. And what's really unique about this explosion or this particular event is actually the power of some of these photons that reached the planet. A lot of these gamma rays had energy measured in tera electron volts. And I know this number might not really make a lot of sense, but let's just say that this is a super, super powerful gamma ray that humans cannot produce artificially, even in some of the most powerful particle accelerators. And here on the planet, we actually have a few facilities designed specifically to try to detect these events from outer space. And normally we find like one or two every year. But in this case, the facility known as LASO, or Large High Altitude Air Shower Observatory located in China, designed specifically to detect high energy particles and high energy gamma rays, suddenly detected thousands and thousands in just mere seconds, all coming from the same point. And quite a lot of them had energy over 18 tera electron volts, with some facilities even claiming that they actually detected something that was 250 tera electron volts, making these the most powerful gamma rays ever detected. But there is a slight problem with this detection and actually with this whole idea of high energy gamma rays coming from faraway distances. And it's really in regards to what we know about gamma rays and what we know about universe as a whole. There's a reason why we've never seen any gamma ray bursts or really a lot of other gamma ray emissions producing photons over 10 tera electron volts. And that's because by design, 
a lot of these high energy photons start to interact with other photons and usually transform as they travel across the universe. This astronomical concept is known as two-photon physics, and there are quite a few papers written about this, like the one right here by Alberto Franchicini, that in essence present the universe in high energy as somewhat opaque. Or just to rephrase this, extremely high energy photons do not pass through the universe without being converted into something else or without losing their energy. And so here, the more energy a photon has, the more likely it's going to be absorbed through the interaction with other photons, such as, for example, from the extragalactic background light. And normally there are two possible outcomes. Sometimes when these photons interact with some other light, they basically trigger the Einsteinian E equals mc square and create particle-antiparticle, but in other cases they end up losing some of the energy, dropping from tera electron volts down to something much, much weaker. And though it's not a problem for a photon traveling for a few million light years, it does become a problem once these photons start to travel for hundreds of millions or even billions of light years. The probability of these photons interacting with some light and transforming becomes increasingly higher. Which is why we don't really see a lot of high energy gamma rays coming from distant locations. Yet strangely enough, in this case, we're actually observing something from 2.4 billion light years away, and not just one or two emissions, we're talking about thousands of photons with super high energies that in some sense violates this basic principle in astrophysics. In other words, we should not be seeing them, this should not be technically possible, and something here does not really add up and doesn't make sense. But in one of the recent studies, a team of scientists potentially proposes a really intriguing solution that might once again present us with evidence for a really exciting particle known as axion. Now, you might already know axions from some of the previous videos, but in short, this was a hypothetical particle proposed back in the days to try to explain some of the initial mysteries when it comes to the universe and the particles inside of it. And specifically, it was supposed to explain a very well-known physics phenomenon known as strong CP problem, which tackles the problem with symmetry when it comes to the idea of matter and antimatter. In short, it tries to explain why there's more matter in the universe compared to antimatter, while also tackling a few other problems. And while Axion was one of the proposed hypothetical particles that might explain everything. And turns out that if it does exist, and if it possesses all of the qualities and all of the properties proposed by this hypothesis, it might also explain the mysterious dark matter. So basically here we have two birds, one stone. But in terms of mass and in terms of properties, it would be extremely low in mass and very difficult to find. Which is why it has not been discovered yet and would be difficult to discover using any known methods. Except for maybe one. Turns out, when it comes to one of its properties, it also tends to interact with electromagnetic fields and specifically powerful magnetic fields, which often change axions into photons or sometimes change photons back into axions. In essence, forming what's known as an axion-like particle. It is essentially a photon, but it sometimes can turn into an axion depending on the strength of the magnetic field. And in the past, these unusual particles may have been potentially discovered when looking at extremely powerful magnetic fields around neutron stars. One of the older videos in the description tackles this potential discovery in more detail, but the main takeaway here is that sometimes photons become axions, and sometimes axions become photons. And turns out that this is really the only possible explanation we have right now for why these photons were visible from such an extremely far away distance. And so in this new study, Giorgio Galanti and his team proposed that in this event there might be a hint of axions. Because the only way we can possibly see these super powerful photons coming from such a far away distance, and especially photons that pass through a lot of different galaxies and a lot of different magnetic fields, is really if some of them, as they traveled away from this event, encountered powerful magnetic fields and actually turned into axions, then traveled for billions of light years not interacting with anything, prior to basically becoming photons once again, once they reached magnetic fields closer to the Milky Way, transforming into photons once again. And while in that case, it makes a little bit of sense. It would explain why we're seeing so many of these particles coming from such far away distance, why they have so much energy, while also presenting us with basically first indirect evidence for axion-like particles coming from distant space, or at least involving thousands of particles as opposed to one or two. And the thing is, the researchers behind the study have previously made similar discoveries coming from distant supermassive black holes, or specifically blazers, as well. 
In other words, there seem to be other hints that these events are happening and these powerful photons transform into axions all the time in order to travel long distances. But obviously this is just one of the explanations and one of the first potential propositions, so in some sense we just have to wait. This was such an incredible event that we're actually going to be studying this for possibly years and years to come, discovering so much more in the process. So only time will tell if the proposition in this paper makes sense and if maybe we finally have our evidence for axions and thus for the existence of dark matter as an axion particle. But at least for now, the conclusion from all of this is that, um, yeah, it's a mystery, we still don't know, but let's just wait and see what other studies and other scientists discover, because this is super fascinating, and this event is going to be teaching us so much more in the near future. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.